Hey all you ghouls and goblins. Welcome to Slash Sisters. I'm Slash Sister Jen. And I'm Slash Sister Holly. I'm not going to get used to that. It's just so hard. You'd think by now you'd be used to You would think thing. after oh, like 65 oh, videos it would just roll off the tongue. But, but we want to welcome you to our brand of channel of Horror movie reviews by true horror movie fans. I, I'll get it out, I swear. One of these days. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're new here, we want to say welcome. We do fun horror stuff here, and make, we want to make sure you slash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Or any of our shenanigans. Yeah, shenanigans always have on this channel. Shenanigans. <laughs> it's a fun word. It sure is. <laughs> you remember the movie Super Troopers? Yes. Say so shenanigans one more time, and I'm pissed pistol with you. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Today we're going to take a step back to our high school days uh, with a movie where the killer is quite simply death itself. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm wearing the skulls on my shirt today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm wearing a skull, in a way. You and your freaking <laughs> Papa X. Oh, my boy. Uh, <laughs> featuring the likes of Devin Sawa and Ali Larder and horror legend Tony Todd. Who has already been on our channel twice. Yes, he has. Um, and this is really just a quick little cameo from him, but mm -hmm. my god, do I love his silky voice. Uh, this movie is clever, adrenaline-filled, and just a crazy experience that keeps you literally on the edge of your seat through the whole movie. I mean, the, the opening scene, or not the opening scene, but like the, the initial death scene on the plane, yeah. that is just bonkers. Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. why don't why don't we uh, go ahead and dive into this and see exactly what death has in store for us? Ooh, shall let's we? Do it. So we start our story with high school student Alex Browning, who is played by Devin Thala, um, which I know I speak for lots of other women in my my age group. I'm not sure if I speak for you, Hallie, but my God, did I have a crush on that man, and I think I still do. Like, have you seen him in Chucky? Whoo! My goodness. You know there are people out there that are fan casting him as the next Freddy Krueger. I've heard, I've heard. Yep, I've also heard Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon wants to do it. I would love to see Kevin Bacon as Freddy. <laughs> um, anyways, he is anxiously getting ready for his flight with his uh, French class to Paris. Um, Parlez-vous français? Yeah, and obviously very, very anxious. Like, you can tell he's kind of a superstitious person. Like, oh, mama, mama, you gotta leave that on. I tell you, I made the last flight without the plane crash or anything, so I figured it's gotta be on the bag, or at least with the bag. At the airport, the students and their teachers board the airplane, and you can tell that Alex is still super anxious about the flight. Even though they did have, like, a, a pre-flight poop together, him and his best friend. I mean, you always got a pre-game poop. You know? And taking a poop with your best friend, there's just nothing like it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I, I, I don't know that I would want to do that with you, but I don't think we could. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> before takeoff, um, Alex basically kind of has a premonition. Like that, we go through the entire events of the entire of of the crash, mm -hmm. down to watching Alex's skin boil off of his face, like. It was a wicked scene. Really wicked. People screaming, mm -hmm. flying out of the side of the of the, the plane, the plane yep. and being sucked out. Like it's it's quite a scene. Um, but then he wakes up, and we realize that this was a premonition, and he um, Fucking please get uh, basically like realizes that like uh, he had a premonition that everyone was going to die. Right. Uh, when the events of his vision begin to occur in real time, yeah. He begins to freak out, causing a fight to break out between him and Curse Miss character. Yeah, Carter. Carter, you dig? You dig? <laughs> Everybody, I mean, okay, what is, what's Sean his name? Sean William Scott, yeah. His character, Billy, calls him a dick like a hundred times in this movie. It's so funny. Right. I love it. Uh, but um, they get into a fight, resulting in not only both of them being kicked off the plane, but several other students along with the teachers. Yeah, yeah. So, like, both teachers and, um, like, Carter's girlfriend, Alex's Harry, best friend Todd comes Todd. off. Um, and then Claire, Claire decides Claire. to just... clear, not Claire. I swear to fucking Christ, I've always heard it pronounced Claire, and then in, in the credits it's Clear. C-L-E-A-R. Clear. Yep. Clear River. That's her fucking name. <laughs> her parents were probably hippies. Mm. Uh, anyways, um, so, yeah. They Actually, are, they make reference to it. I, they do. <laughs> uh, they... 
they all end up off of the plane and um, basically like Mrs. Um, Luton, Luton, she basically forces the other teacher back onto the Because he's the plane, French teacher, he's he the knows French, the French thing. Exactly, exactly. She's like, you know, you go. And um, yeah, so she stays behind. No one, and we mean absolutely no one, not his friends, not the FBI, no one, believes Alex's premonition except for Clear. Yeah. Which is why she followed him. She kind of had like a feel. she says it later in the movie, like, I got this feeling when you were getting off the plane, like, I needed to get off the plane too, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, as they're all arguing in the terminal, uh, Billy kind of walks over to the window and he's like, there they go, here we stay. Well, there they go, and the plane explodes. Which was honestly a very cool sequence to see, like the shockwave from the plane yeah. exploding and that glass breaking on them and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I watched the kill count on this uh, just a couple days ago, and I, uh, James said I would really like to see uh, a MythBusters on that because I don't think an explosion like that is going to make all the glass in a airport explode. Which, not. Granted, I probably mean, not. It, it would. It, it would, would have to be a hell of a shockwave. It would have to be a hell of a shockwave, but it would also the plane would also have to be incredibly close to the airport. Yeah, for, for sure. That and that was clearly that like yeah, it was in, in the, the sky, distance. flying yeah. away. Yeah, so for sure. no, for sure. But it was a cool effect. It was. Way. It was really, really cool. <laughs> Afterwards, the survivors are interrogated by what did I say? FBI agents. Mm -hmm. uh, Ween and Shrek. Yes. Which actually, like, uh, Shrek is a direct re reference to Max Shrek, who played Nosferatu. Or uh, Max Shrek from Batman Returns, played by Christopher Walken. Which was probably a reference to Max Shrek, <laughs> right. who plays Nosferatu. Anyways, carry on! Uh, <laughs> but they're rightfully suspicious of Alex's premonition of the plane going to explode, because yeah, why like, else would somebody say the plane's gonna explode, and then, and then minutes later it Wow, the plane exploded. <laughs> yeah. Um, we cut to 39 days later, which is 39 days for the 39 students and teachers that were lost at the, uh, in the plane crash. And they're having a memorial for all the lost students and teachers at the school. It's made very clear from everyone's reaction to him that Alex has become a pariah. Everyone is freaked out by him and don't even want to associate with him. Todd, yeah. His best friend Todd's dad refuses to let him hang out with him because he believes that he's responsible for Todd's brother's death. Yeah, which is really sad, you know? I mean, like... I mean, obviously, somebody's going to be blamed for it, even though there was nothing that he did that actually caused that to no, happen. No, so, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I, I mean... Sad. It's, it was completely blown out of proportion. I would it would be curious because this is pre nine eleven. Right. This right. Is, I wanted to pre nine eleven. Yeah. Uh, it would be curious to see how this movie would be perceived now. Mm -hmm. You know, like if they made a movie with the plane exploding now, post nine eleven, how that would sure. Be. Which they have. I mean, I can I almost mean, guarantee you they'd lock his ass up immediately. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. At any rate, the. Uh, that night, uh, because of a really strange chain of reactions, uh, Todd is accidentally hanged by the shower I have cord. A, I have a problem with this scene. Yeah? There is absolutely no physical possible no. way that cord could have wrapped around his neck three no. times before he hit the bottom of the tub. Yeah. It would have collapsed, and he would have hit the tub, and for that would have sure. Been and I don't even know that that thing was like strong enough, really, to hold his weight either. So, mm -hmm. either way, uh, so I mean, like, I will say, there's a lot of like you have to kind of uh, suspend disbelief. Suspend belief, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he he basically ends up hanged by this shower curtain. Well, it was like the thing for it, it, clothes, yeah. So clothes. in older homes, it had uh, a line that could stretch from one side of like the back of the shower to the front of the shower and you can hang clothes on it. It's, it's, an, it's an indoor clothes hanger. Basically. Yeah, and you still see them in like hotels sometimes too. I yeah, occasionally. Frequently. Um, anyways, uh, his death is ultimately ruled a suicide um, because it makes it look like death made it look like he hanged himself. Honestly, they could have, like, Death could have left the fucking toilet water on the I floor know. and it would have been completely plausible. It cleaned up after it fell, which is so fucking Right, stupid. but <laughs> it, it could have left it there and it would have just been ruled an accident. But no, now it's ruled a suicide because right. of the guilt of his brother's death and his right. stupid yeah. fucking convoluted storyline. Alex and Claire break into the funeral home. Why? I'm 
still, I still don't understand it. They but needed whatever. to see Todd's body, I guess. So. Yeah, they, they basically wanted to examine Todd's body. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> this is where we get to meet Tony Todd. Yes, we get our cameo from the most silky smooth voice in all of horror, in my personal opinion at least, uh, Mr. Tony Todd, who plays the mortician William Bloodworth, which we actually like... They never say his name. It's literally just like a two-minute cameo where he kind of explains the whole plot of the movie. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he's a plot device, but it's it, he's a great plot device, and I'm, I welcome him. Mm-hmm. I mean, anytime Tony Todd's in a film, I welcome it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be horror. He's, no, he, I like he did. Uh, he did the Flash, the TV show. Really? The Flash. Not physically on screen, but he provided voice. the voice of Zoom. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> Uh, Bloodworth tells them that the survivors who escaped from the plane explosion have disrupted Death's ultimate plan. And now Death is claiming the lives of those who were meant to die in the accident. Yeah. In Death, there are no accidents, no coincidences, no mishaps, and no escapes. And you don't even want to fuck with that, Mac Daddy. I'll see you soon. Uh, the next day, Alex and Clear... He does also explain to them that uh, there were cuticle liter- literatures on his neck, meaning right, he was, trying, he to was fight, trying to fight and get away from the... Meaning that he did not hang himself. Exactly. Which, if that is the fucking case, a medical examiner would have noticed that and put it in the death yeah, it report. It wouldn't have been the mortician who noticed that at the funeral home, because it's definitely at the funeral home, not at the... Uh, not at the morgue. Yeah, I know there's a lot of plot holes in this movie, but they're like plot holes that I'm totally willing to just look over. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to gloss over a little bit. This is, you know, 20. It's 2000. Years yeah, old, I was gonna 20... say it's like 2000s horror, like literally the year 2000. Like this was things were. I don't know. Things were a little weird in this era of horror. Uh, anyway, so the next day, Alex and Claire are discussing their next move when kind of the rest of the survivors all end up in the same place, kind of by happenstance. No, uh, so like Billy was riding his bike. Billy was riding Carter his bike. Carter almost runs him over. Right, and then Carter sees around to- Alex, Alex and Claire. Exactly. And then Mrs. Luton, like, walks out of the, the cafe or something, right? Like, mm-hmm. they're all there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so basically we get, like, this little mini reunion of the the survivors. Sort of. After giving a nice little speech about how she's going to live her life to the fullest and nothing's going to stop it, uh, Terry immediately walks into the road not hearing the bus. And we know not even, even like a half a second. And that bus just smacked her. Now, I will say from my own experience, having almost gotten hit by a car before, like, if you are not paying attention at all, and you're, like, it, I could see how that could happen. But anyways, the whole cast gets sprayed with blood. Well, Mrs. Luton specifically, yeah, Mrs. and Luton she specific. freaks the fuck freaks out. freaks the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but while watching the next, I mean, really, they kind of cut to the next scene, where they're, like, both him and Clear are drinking Alka-Seltzer. I don't know. Weird. Weird stuff in this movie. They got the rumbly and the tumbly. Yeah, well, I think watching multiple friends die would do that to you. Mm -hmm. Anyways, while watching a news report about the cause of the explosion, Alex figures out that death is reclaiming the survivors according to the sequence in which they would have died in the the plane plane. crash. Uh, After piecing this together, he realizes that Mrs. Luton would have been the next to die, so he rushes to her house to try to save her. But she seems she sees him and calls the police, having him removed. Yeah, which is kind of funny. But then, <laughs> in like the most honestly, I think this is the most spectacular kill. This in is the, the most entire... convoluted, overdone. <laughs> it's so freaking weird. Like, like anything that you think can go wrong. Okay, does so how go does wrong. she end up with her ne- her next thro- her throat cut? I. I... I think I missed like half a second and all of a sudden she was bleeding everywhere. I okay, know. so she starts to make tea, coffee, or right? Tea, right? Yeah. And she, she like, pours hot tea into the cup. Okay. And sees that the cup is the fucking uh, thing. Right. Right. And, right. and she freaks out and then in, uh, instead of like cleaning the cup, because the cup net is now hot, she yeah. pours ice cold vodka in it, cracks gotcha. the cup. Gotcha. Then the cup trails vodka all the way from the kitchen to her computer, which she turns on, 
the vodka dips inside the computer, explodes, causes the glass from the computer because it's one of those tube monitors. Gotcha. Puncture her throat. Okay. And then from there, she ends up like the, a fire catches on the vodka catches it's fire, fire which, like, because of the computer. The the bottle explodes, yep. blowing her back. So there's like fire everywhere. She's on the floor. She Bleeding. tries to grab a towel, which, which she pulls. draped over the fucking knife. Yeah. Yeah. Which pulls the entire knife block down onto her, impaling her with a bunch of knives. Like, this whole scene is bonkers. Like, then, straight up bonkers. Then Alex comes in, tries to it save goes her. goes back up. Right? And, like, takes the... He has no, the no, knife no, wait, wait, wait. freaking Before hand. he takes the knife out, a chair falls on her. And, like, the smashes knife. it even more. And then she, like, lies completely still. Then he takes the knife out of her hand, out of her body, and... and yeah, just, and then the house explodes. And then, he, well, he runs away while the house yeah. explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like I said, so fucking convoluted. It's a lot. It's a lot. But it's fun to watch. Like, I mean, as you're watching, you're like, oh, da oh damn. Dang. What's going to happen next? It's, like, it, it, it's almost... Like, when I said at the start of the video, like, it, this movie keeps you on the edge of your seat, like, it certainly does keep you engaged. Like, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> the remaining survivors get together while driving through town as Alex explains the situation. Yeah. Uh, basically, Carter, um, who Carter, is you dick! You dick! <laughs> who's supposed to be next on death's list, uh, essentially becomes angry and decides he's going to take take it all into his own hands and parks on train tracks. Dumbass. Yeah. This. Or as Billy insane. says throughout the entire film, Carter, do you dig? Won't be saying it for much longer. No. Nope. The, but, other, the others are able to escape, and Carter ends up changing his mind at the last minute, but seatbelt jams. Yeah. Thoroughly locking him into the car. And the car yeah. won't start, by the way. Yeah, no. I mean, he can't get off the off the train tracks, but I mean, death is playing his game now. Um, so Alex manages to save him by, like, pulling him out. He has this little premonition that he, like, knows that the, the seatbelt belt won't rip. rip. And he, like, pulls out. He's able to pull Carter out at the last second, but the car gets smashed to pieces oh, by the train. That was a nice car I know, it was too. a beautiful car. Um, and then shrapnel from said car flies up and takes Billy's head off. Uh, from here. From like, yeah, like the, the bottom of the jaw. Yeah, like, it, it was, like went right through his Straight through mouth. his head. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sean William Scott, you were gone too soon. Yes, you were. Billy. Billy Hitchcock. <laughs> Alex, Another reference to right, Hitchcock. You right. know. Alex learns that uh, because he intervened with Carter's death, it skipped him to the next person in the sequence, and now he is next on the list. Yeah. Or is he? Or is he? Exactly. The next day, we find him hiding out in Clear's dad's cabin, fortified cabin. Right? Which is like, he's like put something on every tiny little sharp thing. Like, I mean, he's literally like basically kind of like dummy proof he puts, the entire He puts place. on leather gloves to open up potted meat to, right. eat, to eat a can of potted oh, meat. Oh, I did it again? If you, if you, if <laughs> Jenny Ratching Show. <laughs> Have you ever had potted meat? No. I don't mm. think I want it. It's it's I not good. It. It's, no. it's not good. I can't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cat food. <laughs> it's like what? No what? cat food. Uh, anyways, Alex remembers that he changed See, he changed sheet. I can't say it. Changed seats. Changed seats. <laughs> with two of the changed you know, the, sheets. Changed sheets. <laughs> Jenny's mouth's not working today. Uh, with two classmates, which ended up changing the order. The order, yeah. Um, which makes him realize that Clear is actually the next one on death's list. Mm -hmm. He rushes to her house uh, via canoe because the FBI <laughs> yeah. agents are. Rolling up on the like, cabin. See you later. <laughs> just gonna. No big deal. Um, but and they just like let him go. Yeah, well, you know? because they can't. They can't. I mean, they don't have a boat to chase him and everything like that. Um, so they they let him go. Uh, he gets across the river and he damn near drowns in a fucking puddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like face down in like two inches of water. Like all it takes is a spoonful. Ah, uh, that's true. That's true. Um. When he does eventually get to Clear's house, he finds her trapped inside of a car. Through another with... convoluted sense of fucking things that Again. have led to an so electrical... So this was like, okay, the dog was outside mm -hmm. and like she had to like, I don't know, there was a whole mess of different things. 
Um, but she, like, gets the dog inside, and then, like, the house starts... Does, does the house start on fire? Something burns. I think it's the garage burns. Okay. And then there's, like, there's, a, like, there's a, just electrical cords, mm -hmm. like, like actual electric... Well, it's the, the... Power lines. The power yeah. lines have fallen yeah. down. Right. Um, so it's electrifying the water, then it's up on the car, electrifying the car. But yeah, the and then it ignites grounded. the gas around her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, so like he runs up on her and he's like, you're safe, you're in a grounded car, like, you know, mm -hmm. and he kind as of... As long as you don't touch any metal whilst yeah. in the car, you can be okay. And he basically kind of convinces her, like, you know what you have to do. Like, I'm gonna grab this cable, you know what you have to do, like, just let me do it. Mm-hmm. So he does grab said cable, allowing her to escape from the car just before it explodes. And we fade to black at the end of the film. Yeah. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> we do get a fade to black. But then we pick up six months later, um, again, with another little time jump. And we've got Alex, Clear, and Carter, the three remaining people, boarding a plane to go to Paris to celebrate I cannot survival. believe they got on a fucking plane again. I would again. not. I, mean, I would Let not. us know in the comments, would you get on a plane after having a premonition and live through all this shit? Because I sure as fuck would. Sorry, Paris. I'll look at you in pictures. While talking about the ordeal, Alex tells them that death never skipped him after he saved Clear, and that he is afraid that their troubles are not yet over. Yeah. And that is a very valid fear. Yeah, for sure. Uh, even though they're both like, eh, dude, it's just like... It's very clear that Alex has like a very bad anxiety disorder. Oh. <laughs> you what, know, even you? before even before all of this, like the opening scene with his parents, it's very clear that he has like major anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. Um anyways, so Alex retreats when a bus hurls a parking sign towards a neon sign. It's just another like big like things fall down and something comes this way and something goes that way and you know, basically, like, this neon sign comes flying down, and Carter pushes them out of the way, mm -hmm. and says, like, so if it skipped you, who's next? And comes down, smashes Carter, and fades, not even a fade to black, cut to black. Right. And that's it. And that is the end of the film. And if you're hearing a cat meowing, I do apologize. My, my little kitty thinks that it's time for her to be fed, and it's not. It's okay. She's just our special guest today. Mm hmm <laughs> Um... I, I mean, I, Valentine Effect aside, I do look back on this with very fond memories. I, I, it was one of my favorite, like, films from this era. For sure. For sure. Uh, I do enjoy the entire series. I think they get a little overdone. Yeah. They're supposed to be making a sixth one. I, I don't. The fifth one is really freaking good. I, I, I love what they did with the fifth one. I won't spoil it or anything right, for anybody that hasn't right. seen it, but I love what they did. Uh -huh. I, mm. But, but um, I this they have a sixth one coming out, which I don't know how they're going to work that into like how yeah if the franchise is ended over, after five or, or, yeah or, I right know. I don't know um be interesting. But uh, for me, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the acting was brilliant for mm -hmm. the most part. Yeah. Uh, I loved all the actors that were in it. Yeah, I mean, me too. Devin Sawa, Ali Larder. Um, Curse Man. Curse Man. Yeah. Sean William Scott. Yeah. Daniel Roebuck is one of the freaking uh Oh, FBI yeah, agents. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, no, I, th I thought it was good. Uh, obviously, Tony Todd. Um, I, I mean, I personally give it a bloody machete. It's a bloody machete up for me, too. Um, plot holes aside, I mean... Which there were many. I, there's plenty. There's plenty. There and there's plenty, plenty of, like, like you got to, like, suspension of belief. You know, you just got to, like, take all of that aside. Mm-hmm. And just look at it as the fun, bonkers ride that it is. Like, it, it doesn't totally stop. Is. It, from the start to the finish, there's no lag. There is no point where you're, like, wondering, like, okay, when, when is the action going to pick back up again? It does not stop. It is... There from, are there are minor lulls, but in those lulls, but they you, need get, those. you get right out of those real fast yep. with, a, with a quick, fast death. You need those almost for, like, a quick little breather to mm -hmm. just be like, whew, okay, like, a lot has happened. We need to, like, take a second. You know, I just, I love this movie. I think it's great. I think mm -hmm. the acting's great. Um, it's definitely, like, a little time capsule of the year 2000, especially, like, the pre-9-11 thing. Right, um, right. In the airports and everything, and just, like, right. seeing how different security was before 9-11 and I, I so did notice lax. though so lax. I did notice though like they asked him did anyone else did anyone hand you any packages while you were in the airport and because he holds up that thing that he got that from the right, or whatever yeah right. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it is, it is really an interesting film. I love it. I think it's, it's, it's a bloody machete up for me, too. So, two bloody machetes up. And, this guy. and with that, we are going to send this straight to death's door. Get out of here. <laughs> and I think we should do something super duper duper nostalgic. What do you think? Mm, nostalgic. So we're talking 80s? I, yeah, I mean, okay, I talk about how this really captures 2000. The movie we are about to review captures the 80s in a way that I think no other movie really can or ever has. I mean, to to an extent, yes. Um, oh, fuck it, let's just... Hey, let's tell them what we're gonna do. The Lost Boys. Yeah. From producer Richard Donner, uh, legend in the filmmaking business, yeah. and director Joel Schumacher, uh, not so much, though. So. Um, he, he did some really shitty movies. Yeah, well, so, uh, let's face it. Let's um, give him credit for this one. Right, this Where one credit is... credit is due. <laughs> this one is due. <laughs> We're going to be looking at the 1987 classic, The Lost Boys, a vampire flick that doesn't start off as a vampire flick, much like from the Sodom. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one, though. This mm -hmm. is going to be, this is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So come back here in one week's time when we dive on and sink our fang, fangs, 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 sink our fangs into the movie that is The Lost Boys. All right, so until then, we want you to slash the subscribe button, stab that like button, and ringling the grave bell so you don't get buried alive and you continue, continue to get updates on all our new videos. Until then, we will see you all in, in the, the afterlife. afterlife.